Hey everybody, it's Zito, and I want to welcome you to Hungry for Comedy. This is a special comedy special that we put together to help the food banks here in Massachusetts. We're raising money for the Western Mass Food Bank and the Worcester County Food Bank, and we need your help because, you know, unemployment is up and benefits are down, demand is up and donations are down. That is a dangerous combination for people that are food insecure. So I decided to invite some of my funniest friends and uh, they're gonna spend some time with us and just uh, hopefully entertain us. Actually, I know they will. These people are hilarious. And of course, they're available because they're comedians and we're recording this on, on a Wednesday at five in the afternoon. Actually, because of the pandemic, a lot of the funniest comedians I know would be available at eight o'clock on a Saturday night, including myself, because the comedy clubs are closed. So we spill over into other formats and other platforms, and so we're here. So I wanna remind you that during the entire show and even after, you can go to 961srs.com slash food bank to donate to the Worcester County Food Bank. And when they give you that little thing that says, what prompted you to donate, just put in the word comedy. If you want to donate to the Western Mass Food Bank, go to mix931.com slash food bank and please give, give, give. All right. So let's get started with the fun. Uh, my first guest is Kelly McFarland and oh, my God, hilarious, hilarious woman. Uh, she's performed at the DCU Center and Comics Come Home. She was first runner up in the Boston Comedy Festival. She was best of the fest at the Aspen Rooftop Comedy Festival. And let me tell you something, in the uh, stand-up circles, that is a very big deal. Uh, she is featured on the best, the uh, comedy album, Best of Boston Stand-Up, Volume 1. We're assuming they're going to do more of his Volume 1. She was on the very first one. And uh, here is just a little taste of Kelly doing some stand-up. I watch a lot of true crime. 2020, 48 hours, the ID channel on a loop. Yeah, podcast, I'm a murderino, I love all of it, Okay. Here's the deal. When I lay down to go to bed, my final thought is always, someone probably followed me home from the stop and show. <laughs> because they want some of this. <laughs> they saw me touching the fruits with my tiny hands. And they got a thing for tiny hands. <laughs> and they're going to get in. So I wear a lot of pajamas with layers, like Velcro, zippers, buttons, buttons, buckles. Right, because if you're going to get to my shit, you're going to work for it. You know what I mean? So here she is, my second favorite stepmom in the entire world, Kelly McFarland. Oh, that's so nice, you know. <laughs> your first is your wife, obviously. Obviously, the lovely I mean, Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah. I'll take a I'll take a second place to Elizabeth any day. She's yeah. great. And you just celebrated your wedding anniversary. I saw it online. It was so sweet. You were saying yeah. great stuff about your hubby. And that's <laughs> he was saying all this great stuff. He was actually saying better stuff about you than about him, which makes sense because the husband <laughs> generally has to do more sucking up. In that situation, so I guess that's true. I mean, I wasn't, I'm not big on posting mush on Facebook. Right. That's not my jam. And then he posted so early in the day, I was like, really pull it together. So, so had to do something. I point. had to do something. Yes. Yeah. So, let me ask you, what what are you doing to like as far as stand up to keep busy? Are you working again? Are you doing any stand up now? Um Mm, I mean, are we calling it stand up what we're doing right now? Like there's so much. I mean, have you done a show where they're in a car beeping at you? Yes. Like, yes, I have. That was weird. It was so uh, funny because I told them right at the beginning, because when I got up there, some people are applauding, some people are beeping. I'm like, just if I if you beep instead of laugh and I flip you off, just, you know, forgive me. It's just a gut reaction. So. Oh, it's so distracting, too. So I've done a few drive in shows and that. I got them to flash their lights, which I liked a little bit better. Oh, okay. You like yeah. it? It was a little less hostile. A little less hostile. And then that got on my nerves, right? Because now it's like every, I mean, because I'm so funny that every, you know, the lights flashing, I'm like, am I having a stroke? What is happening? So it was just a lot going on, honking and lights. Right. And, um, yeah, it does throw your timing a little bit. Like I couldn't yeah. land the plane. Do you know what I mean? Like I'd get to the end and then I'd be like, typically I would have a giant laugh and know how to say goodnight. And now I'm still standing in a parking lot. Well, I, I know for me, like the first time I went out, it had literally been easily four or five months. Yeah. 
I felt like I was, I felt like I was walking around my own house when I was doing my stuff. <laughs> all the lights were out. Like I know where the furniture right. is. I really see it. You know? Really weird feeling. So, yeah. Um, what about like during the pandemic, have you been through any weird phases? Like we had a uh, bread baking phase in our house. Did you do any of that? Was there like a pajamas all day phase? Well, I mean, for comedians, that's kind of a normal. Yeah. So it's interesting that people were baking bread and you got on board with that. Did you bake bread before? No, 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 no. no. Well, see, you're misunderstanding me. I said, oh, okay. And when I say we, I mean Elizabeth. My right. Wife. Sure. So, yeah. And it really lasted maybe not even a week, but she's yeah. a cook, but she's just never baked bread. And she just, Heard about people baking bread. She's like, I gotta make sourdough bread, and then it was a over. lot of people were looking for sourdough starter. That's that was a thing. Like there was a shortage of paper towels, uh, wipe Clorox wipes, and short like how whatever. Sa I don't know how to bake bread. I don't know how to do that. I would never have guessed that from your explanation, uh, Kelly. Really? Because I you really were. I thought we were a cooking show for a second. Was I started yeah, <laughs> sourdough starter. That was like that's where it's wrong. I don't even know what that is. What well, like, is it yeast? Because we I she asked me to get yeast at the grocery store and it was gone. And then she ordered it online and she got this like five pound block of yeast, which turns out to be about a lifetime supply. It's like sitting out in the garage pantry right now. I didn't even know yeast came in a block. So there it, you go. Yeah. Like I yeah, I don't know anything about that at all. We didn't do anything. Can I just tell you, when I see someone thriving or like learning a new language or a skill, I'm like, no, I just learned how to really not do anything. Because yeah. I feel like we're very on the go. Like, there's always that joke that comedians just hang out in their pajamas all day. Right. We're actually really busy people. Like, well, I mean, look at you, you have a radio show um yeah, um yeah that's true but everyone is working on something all the time right and irons in the fire right and you couldn't do that so i had to like really kind of figure out what i'm supposed to do with all this time uh and i did nothing with it so i feel great good for you kelly so now that brings us to <laughs> Do you have anything you want to plug? I mean, you're so generous with your time to help us with this whole thing. Oh, my gosh. My pleasure. Thanks and all that. What, what, so we want to get your plugs in. What's happening with you? Okay. So here's currently what's happening. Oh. Nothing. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm trying Just to write. Kelly McFarland, <laughs> you are S-O-L. So if you want me. No, I am working on new stuff because this is how I see it. And um, you're having Jimmy later in the show, obviously, right, right. you know, he gave me such great advice at the top of this pandemic. He said, just take care of your mental health because when it's over, you're going to want to come out swinging. So I've been just trying to write a lot and mm -hmm. I do have new stuff, which that didn't come right away in the beginning of the pandemic. So right. I do have dates for next year, which is good. And I have some dates for the fall. Yeah. And I'm trying to do online shows because I think if yeah. that's, if that's what we got right now, then you got to do it. Yeah, at least you know. If, at least if you're on online, cracking wise, it's something. It's just right. working that working that muscle. And yeah, hilarious. People should check you out, Kelly Mac Kelly MacFarland dot com. That's Kelly MacFarland dot com. I have a couple albums out, so if people want to check out my stand up, you can stream it everywhere. You get your albums. Your jokes are very funny, Kelly. Thank this you. Funny. I love funny comedians. Those are the kind I like. Um, <laughs> We asked you to send us another clip other than stand up. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love for you to set this up. It's a little <laughs> unusual. I didn't recognize you. I honestly didn't. And I've spent some time with you. I didn't, just didn't recognize you. Wait, uh, now I have to wonder which clip you're going to show. Cause it's, I gave the, me... it's the animated clip. It's oh, clip. yeah. I didn't don't look like myself in the animated clip. <laughs> So, yes. So uh, uh, besides being a comedian, I also am an actor and I do voiceover and what have you. And so I have this really good friend, uh, Brendan Boogie, who is a filmmaker. And last year I did a film. I was in one of his films last year that went to all these festivals and we were supposed to have a big premiere in Boston. And of course, that didn't happen because we had a pandemic. It's called The Sympathy Card, and it was winning all these awards, and I was really happy to be part of the project. Well, he, during the pandemic, decided he wanted to uh, just work on stuff uh, here and there. And so he made this thing called Intergalactic Speed Dating, which is a cartoon. 
And it's exactly what it sounds like. And so I did a voice for that. All right. So Kelly McFarland featured in intergalactic speed dating. Check it out. I would have to say my biggest turn on is mustaches, a goatee, a honeycomb, um, a nose beard, um, the old three fingers magoo, uh, the Scranton shoulder strap, the dangler, the over the head dangler, uh, the triple dangler, the St. Augustine's taint, uh, the West Texas bing bong. Yah, yah, me, you. Kelly, that was ridiculous and hilarious. So stupid, right? In the best way. Thank you. Well, Thank you before, for sharing. Yeah. Before we move on to uh, yes. the three of you are going to be on together at the end of the show, and we're going to be doing the uh, best person in the world contest. Any trash talk you want to lay out for Corey Rodriguez and Jimmy Dunn, the other people on the show tonight? I mean, I think if you were to ask them seriously who they think the best person is, I think they're going to probably say me. I'm a very kind person. I'm nice. Because <laughs> you're not well, eligible. Okay. I asked you to trash talk, and this is what you come up with. You know, I really feel like. I feel strongly that. So, I know. I can't. I can't trash talk at any of you because I love you all dearly. I love you all equally, as someone would say, um, a parent would say. You're a great trash talker. When this is over, we're going to run three on three, and you're going <laughs> to because you can't trash talk. You can't. You have to be nice, right? Nice. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. So much, Kelly. We'll see you at the end of the show. All right. See you in a bit. Oh, my God. Isn't she wonderful? I just love her. She's fantastic. So funny, too. Uh, be sure to check out kellymacfarland.com and uh, check out her albums. All right. Just a quick reminder the reason we're doing this is to help raise money for the food banks in Massachusetts. If you want to donate to the Worcester County Food Bank, go to 961srs.com slash food bank. Make sure to put the word comedy in there when they say what prompted you to give. And if you want to give to the Western Mass Food Bank, go to mix931.com slash food bank. All right, let's get to our next guest, Corey Rodriguez. This guy has been on Conan, Conan, Conan is the word I was looking for, as in Conan O'Brien. That's right. He has his own dry bar comedy special. He has his own show. He's on Sirius XM radio every day. And you know I love a guy when I plug satellite radio. Normally, I don't do that. All right. And uh, he's the pride of Milton, Massachusetts. God bless the Commonwealth. Uh, let's say hi to uh, Corey Rodriguez. Here's him doing his thing. All right, here we go. We are kicking this show off right now. The first thing we want to say is we were just having a conversation about working. We we're having a conversation about why people work. What do they get from work? Kinson said, if you work, your parents should bake you a cake and you should get a high five from your boss. And then he finally said, you should make some cake. You said, what's the other thing? The green stuff that you pay for stuff with. Money. money. He said you should make some money. That is right. Boom. You got it right. Ah, you got it right. Ah, you got it right. You got it right. You got it right. Can't stand. Fantastic. Great stuff. All right. Here's Corey Rodriguez. Corey. <laughs> hey, what's up, Chris? Hey, man. Thanks for doing this. I, I can't thank you enough. Really. It sounded, it sounded really genuine. Like you really like my stuff right there. It sounded really I like <laughs> Well, Corey, you know, I've been doing this radio thing for a long time. I don't have to tell yeah. you. So, you know, it's all very show business. So uh, I was talking to Kelly about this. So you are always one of the busiest guys I know. You you built a following around the country by just by hoofing it, by going out there and doing it. So I thought about you a lot during the pandemic because of all the guys I know that haven't been able to work, you keep popping into my head. So what are you doing? Are you doing these outside tent shows or what? Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing it all, man, as much as possible. So tent shows, college shows over Zoom, corporate shows over Zoom. I just got I, you know, so we wait, always wait, wait, should, should stand up over Zoom. Is the audience on so that you can hear them laughing or is it just you or how's it work? So I, I've done it both. Uh, clearly, I prefer the audience to be on, but I've done it where, you know, they're like, hey, you know, we're, we're going to broadcast this and you won't be able to see anybody. So I'm just talking to myself or I'm talking to one person that's a host inside of another room that's just watching and like looking over their notes and every once in a while, like looking up like, <laughs> and then just like back down uh -oh. with notes. And so 45 minute audition for, yeah, no, well, that's what it feels like. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. I try to, I try to stay positive about it because that's what it is right now. So it's right. like, since that's yeah. what it is, 
I just I just go hard. I just go hard at it and 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 hope that you know the people on the other end are laughing. That's it. What are you yeah, but that doesn't surprise me that you're doing all that stuff because, like I said, you really have. I mean, I, I over the over the years. I mean, I knew you when you started, and over the yeah, years, I've seen you like very. out out there, out there. No, dude, yeah. I remember doing a show for Dick Doherty. You were yeah. opening, and you came up to me and introduced yourself, and you're like, uh, "Dick asked me to take your picture," and you were like, "All like, you know, <laughs> brand new, like a baby comic," and now you're just doing all this stuff. It's fantastic. The other thing I want all that I want to talk to you about is that you are probably. You could be like the cleanest headliner in coming out of New England comedy right now. Cleaner than me. And I get calls all the time. Well, they want a clean guy. And I thought of you. And I'm like, I'm not always that clean. Yeah. When the FCC isn't listening and I do stuff. But was that a conscious decision early on for you? Or is that just you? Are you like a Boy Scout? What's your deal? No, man. No, I, I am I am the farthest from, from clean, man. That's the thing. Like, I, for the most part, I'm, I'm not. But there's an avenue there. So I just... Mm. I just, uh, not to be all whatever, all, I, I don't think this is very inside baseball, but just, I, I, it's okay, man. That's why we're here, you know? Wanna, yeah. Well, I, I want to be able to, I want to be able to do everything. So I just mm -hmm. figure I can go, I can go as dirty as, as the rest of them, as long as it's still funny to me. That's what I do. That's how, that's who I am. That's how I start. I, I speak freely. I say right. what I want to say, but then dry bar came along and they were like people would be like oh can you go clean and i started doing colleges before that so mm -hmm. i was doing colleges and then all of a sudden i was like all right in order for me to get through these knackers and apkas i had to go and clean in front of the advisors and then you get to the school and you can be a little more free so i was right. like all right so i would go clean i was like oh these jokes still work because in my mind starting out it was always like if you go clean uh you know it's corny you know what i mean like corny, mm -hmm. corny. yeah yeah right sounds like a dad joke all the time yeah like how do yeah. you who, who does that you know you start thinking all these clean comics like ah that's so, that's for the birds like you're 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 you're, you're holding back your creativity that's bullshit <laughs> like you know like you can you can right. be who you want to be you know what i mean the, the inflection on the words and everything and so it was just cool i was doing it at colleges and then all of a sudden the dry bar opportunity came up and i was like you know what let me let me try it. And then all of a sudden, I was like, oh, I can do a cruise ship. I can go clean. So then I go squeaky yeah. clean for whatever on a cruise ship. And then all of a sudden, it was just something that I could do. So, I, you know, there's times when I'm talking about things that are very, uh, you know, out there, you know, uh, uh, fellatio, whatever. And there's other times when I'm... <laughs> There's other times when it's very, it, it's just not that. It just well, at least it. you're talking about it, Corey. So that's yeah. something. You know? <laughs> I'm a married guy, so that's, that's all I get to do. All right, listen, I want to get into the plugs. I want to point everybody to CoreyRodriguez.com. We have your name on the screen because, of course, I don't have to tell you, Rodriguez is a name that can be spelled about 700,000 different ways. Right. So have your name right. on the screen. You can go to CoreyRodriguez.com. Anything in particular that you want to plug besides sending people to the site? Right. Let me say this one thing before I plug, Chris. Okay. I got a call. I got a message yesterday. First time I've gotten a message like this. You know how we always clown around and we're like, you know, we'll do a show. We'll be dirty for a minute. We'll be like, oh, I do kids parties. I don't know. You know, we say that shit. All, you know, just a little thing. Right. I literally got a message. I got an email yesterday. It was like, hey, uh, I'm just wondering if you do virtual birthday parties. My daughter's turning six. So I just want to know how that works and how much it costs. So I'm like, I'm looking at the thing. I haven't responded yet. I just was like, this is fucking funny. Like, I literally got. <laughs> I mean, I know you're clean. I know you can work clean, but six. But you know what, though? And that brings me to the clip I want to use because I've been, yeah. I, I've become a fan of your, because you were doing, you're doing a kid show, Facebook yeah. Live. That's probably why I called you. Right. That's what I'm thinking. They probably were like, let's get this guy. He already does a virtual show. So that's what I'll plug. I mean, is is Corey Stories, which is a show that I do every day on Facebook Live. Used to be at 7.30, but we're going to push it back to 7 o'clock because the kids are back in school. You know, right. I may even change that to 6.30 at some point. But uh, finding that sweet spot between dinner and getting and cleaning up the kitchen and the kids can watch and, like, trying to find that whole sweet spot right. is uh, where we're at right now. But, uh, yeah. So but that, you also have you also have a YouTube channel with all those episodes. So yeah, there's, there's probably 80-plus episodes that are, that are going to – just real quick, your co-star on the show, Corey yep. Story. You have a young co-host on the show, and who is that? Tell us about him. That's my five-year-old son, Kinston, and he is—he's awesome. I mean, he's like—he runs things. I mean, he's like, uh, you know, he's the—I tell him he's the producer, and he—and he—he just runs things. He's the—he's you know, um, I, he's the awesome. show. You got to see it. You guys sing the theme song together, and uh, this is—I I mean, I, I want to share a little bit of it with everybody. Here's a little clip of Corey's stories. Facebook Live every night, 
7.37. We'll see. Check it out. But don't try to be sneakier than the adults that take care of you and look after you, okay? Because they always know. Because they always know because they have your brain. They gave you all that smart, but still in the brain. He's talking about your parents right now. That's so true, right? It's, it's we gave you your brain. I gave him some of that brain. And his mom gave him the rest of that brain. I gave him most of his brain. And mom gave, dad gave you one side, mom gave me the Dad other. gave you one side and a half. And then mom gave you the other little piece. No, you gave me one side, mom gave me No, what do you mean? I gave you, ah, I, I gave you both sides of your brain. All right, never mind. I gave him one side, his mom gave him one side. Kind of. I'm watching, man. Just let uh, just to let you know, Corey. I'm watching. Oh, that's cool, man. That's cool, Chris. <laughs> I present the urge to come in and actually be a contestant and try to win a prize. I feel like yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna... <laughs> I don't want to show up the four year old girl. That, you know, I'm a, I don't want to make any kids cry. Like, yeah. Why did, why did the crazy old man get the prize and not me? So, uh, just any trash talk for the best person in the world contest before we get before we move on. How do you think um, you're gonna do? Any trash talk. So, so what, what am I, who am I trash talking? I'm trash talking. Well, you've got Kelly McFarland, Jimmy? Jimmy Dunn, and you, once I'm, one, Jimmy's going to join me next, and we're all three going to be together. We're going to play the best person in the world contest. And uh, one of you will be named the best person in the world. So see now <coughs> here's the thing. I watched Kelly go already and Kelly, Kelly kind of had a tough spot and an easy spot because, you know, she didn't have to say shit. She didn't have to say anything. <laughs> Jimmy's in the best spot, mm -hmm. right? Because I think Jimmy should have went first because he's gonna probably talk shit, and I'm not. I don't have anything bad. I, I like. I genuinely like both of these people. I'm sure Jimmy will dig the shit out of me somehow, right? But I don't know. But I just, I, I don't, I don't have any problems with them. I like them both. All right. All right. Well, of course Jimmy got the best spot. It's Jimmy Dunn. I had to give him the best spot. Come on. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Corey. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. This is a great right. cause, Thanks man. Thank you very much. A few minutes. Once again, I want to remind you, the whole reason we're doing this is to try to raise money for the food banks in Massachusetts. If you want to donate to the Worcester County Food Bank, go to 961srs.com slash food bank. Make sure when they ask what prompted you to give, put in the word comedy. We sure would appreciate it. And if you want to give to the Western Mass Food Bank, go to mix931.com slash food bank. Okay, I want to get to my final guest right now. This guy's an old buddy of mine, uh, Jimmy Dunn, and uh, he's been on The Late Show with David Letterman. He's uh, featured at the Montreal Just for Last Comedy Festival. If you don't know what that is, that is the premier comedy festival in all of comedy. Runs his own comedy festival, Hampton Beach Comedy Festival. So much fun. He was one of the stars of CBS's McCarthy's. That's right. This guy's a sitcom star, and he's half of one of my favorite podcasts, Two Boston Guys, Whack Up a Pie, which next month, will turn into a great comedy album and comedy special. And uh, he's probably one of the best known faces in all of New England comedy because of all the commercials he's done. Here's a little taste of uh, Jimmy bringing the fun. But I gotta have the New England edition. How do you make a truck a New England edition, really? Come on. We put giant knobby tires on it for running over squirrels on Route 2 in your F-150. New England edition. We got room for seven roast beef sandwiches on the dashboard. <laughs> we filled the glove compartment with tartar sauce in your F-150. New England edition. We got Marky Mark Wahlberg doing the GPS voice. <laughs> and whenever he tells you to take a turn, he follows it up with a, come on, come on. <laughs> in your F-150, New England edition. We've already put a Yankee suck bumper sticker right on the back of your F-150, New England edition. And we've disconnected the blinker so nobody knows where the hell you're going. <laughs> In your F-150 New England edition. Great stuff, Jimmy, as always. Thanks for being here. Hello, Chris, my friend. How are you? Good to see you, brother. Good you to too, see you. man. It's now, been too long. Right out of the gate, I want to let people know, I mentioned your podcast, Two Boston Guys Whack Up a Pie. I invited both of you. Yes. You and your partner, Tony V, in the podcast. You were like, I'm there. Tony apparently doesn't care about hungry people, just not here. I, I don't, Tony just, big time, yeah, and I'll, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you this, but he's out on the road with Bill Burr. Oh, you're kidding. No, no kidding. so he's out opening for the biggest comic in the world, so he big timed us. And you're here with me. Yeah, wow. in my basement that's not even finished. <laughs> wow, dude. 
You're like the you're sort of like the Art Garfunkel of two Boston guys watching right now. You're having a John Oates day right now. That's funny. <laughs> so um now I I was talking to everybody else about what they're doing through the pandemic, but if anybody follows you on social media, you almost started a whole different career as a lobsterman. I mean, I, I gotta well, we gotta talk about the bugs, man. Tell us well, about how that all came about, why you got so into the lobstering. Well, so I live here on the ocean. I, li I live on a beach in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. And right. and I knew we were going to be locked down for a while. I knew this was going to be a while. And I said, look, I need something to do that keeps me sane. And so I looked into what it would take to get a commercial lobster license. So it <laughs> okay. turns out. That's you, Jimmy. Like, you make that sound like naturally. Yeah. I knew we were going to be locked down. I decided to look into. Yeah. No, yeah. No, so I'm not going to do that. Well, here's what I found out. Here's what you got to do to get a commercial license. You need $140. That's it. That's, That's it. it. No education. You know, there's no test. There's no, no and, and the orange man sent me $1,600, so I got money, right? <laughs> so now I, the only thing I also needed was a boat. A boat, right? So I, I figure I need a, vo a boat, right? Because you, you can't really swim out there. The Gordy House. So, yeah, so I... I went on uh, I went on the internet and I found a, a 1970 Boston whaler that's eight feet long. It's the smallest Boston whaler they've ever made. <laughs> and so I bought that for 500 bucks. How do and, they call that a whaler if it's eight feet long? How's that a whaler? I mean, it was this little baby whaler sailboat that they made in the 70s. And there's a few okay. of them left that hadn't been destroyed. And I literally found this one in a barn somewhere. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I grabbed it and I was like, all right, it's a 50-year-old whaler. It's got to be the Gordie Howe. So we, that's, um, why, that's why we named it, we named it the Gordie Howe. Um, I went on Craigslist and bought a handful of junk lobster traps. And I, <laughs> I went on YouTube and Googled how to catch a lobster. Everything's on YouTube. You can learn it's all there. Anything that's ever happened, you know, how to do it on YouTube. It's fantastic. Yeah, I got a bait guy up the street. And so – I got some bait. I got an old outboard motor, and I and I figured the rest of it out. And I've had I brought it in yesterday because of Hurricane uh, of uh, Hurricane Ted. Okay. Yeah, and I didn't hear about Ted. There's been so many hurricanes. It's know. it's way out to sea, but it's cranking up the waves. I see. Um, in fact, I've been in the ocean all day. I've been surfing all day up here. It's been beautiful. Okay. But so yeah, I I brought it in yesterday. But it's been I had a blast all summer just catching lobsters. And then uh, this is where it's not a business. I gave them away because I can't stand lobster. That's the irony of the whole thing. I hate the taste of lobster. I hate the smell of lobster. So, so I walked around the neighborhood like the ice cream man, just handing out lobsters. And my neighbors so love me. So you're in for, say, after the, the motor and everything, you're in for about a thousand bucks with all this stuff, plus the time, but you didn't sell a single lobster. No, and, and with bait and the equipment, and I had to buy two motors because the first one died. Right. I, I, I figured that. out that the lobsters cost me about $55 a pound. So there's not really a solid business plan there. <laughs> you are, but I'll tell you what, proves that I had so much fun. It proves you're not a lobsterman, you're a comedian. Exactly. Typically the kind of business acumen we possess. Well, and then I brought my little GoPro camera out there. Of course, and I, yeah. I saw and I was starting to take pictures with the lobsters. And then, of course, I'm out there all in the middle of the ocean all by myself. So I started talking to the lobsters because I don't have an audience to talk to right now. So I'm talking to the lobsters and I'm making these little movies talking to the lobsters. And everyone's loving those on the Internet. So I just well, kept doing that. And that's that that's what entertained me all summer. It was a blast. I feel like when we go back to work, you're going to have all this hilarious stuff. And, and like it's going to get titters. And you're going to be like, this stuff killed with the lobsters. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Hey, uh, get in a plug about the uh, two Boston guys whack up a pie. I assume you want to uh, plug that because I've heard you guys talking about the the new album and the comedy special. I'm excited to see it. People yeah, I'm it. excited too. So Tony V's one of my best friends, and as you know, and we all know, just one of the funniest comics on the planet. Great He's guy. never made an album, which amazes me. In 30 years, he never made an album. He never really recorded anything other than his TV appearances. Right. Um, and so we captured a really special night before the pandemic mm -hmm. at the uh, at, at the dead at the Norwood Theater. Okay. And sure. it was beautiful. And it was a snowstorm and it was crazy. The fans were awesome. And we we filmed that. 
And then we also did a day where we walked around Boston talking about Boston and talking about me and Tony. And so it's sort of a hybrid special. There's a whole bunch of really great stand-up in there. Right. But there's also um, some really cool stuff with me and Tony. And just we, inter we interact so well. We get along so well. And it's, it's really, really funny. I'm super proud of it. And it's coming out um, in a bunch of different forms. It's going to be on album. But the video is going to be great. And that comes out on... Uh, I, on on Apple TV and also on Amazon Prime. Fantastic! At uh, beginning of next month. Can't wait to see it. Like I said, I mean, I, I, listen. I don't know what's happening to me today because Corey was on. I'm plugging satellite radio. You're on. I'm plugging podcasts. It's almost like I'm not even on <laughs> terrestrial radio. I do my stuff live normally. But what's uh, terrestrial radio? I don't even know what that is. Uh, the, the irony is that all that we were talking about this earlier. All the terrestrial radio is do, being done. Uh, the, the, by the way, the podcast, everybody's remotely doing it now. Yeah, right. Exactly. Every, yeah, that's the way my partner, Suzanne Lewis, is working from her living room and has been since like late March. And she's amazing. She, they gave her this little box and she has mastered it. I mean, even when it goes out, she's back like in two seconds. So I've, uh, I've been working from my living room also, but I haven't, I don't have a job. <laughs> Yeah, your wife has a job, I'm assuming. Thank God my wife's got a job. God bless her. I don't know how she puts up with me. But the irony of this thing is that um, she works in the in the PPE um, business. Wow. And so That's when the business. pandemic broke, she had to set up shop here for two months. And she sells masks that, around the world. And like the real high-end ones that the doctors use. So she's running this high-end medical supply thing from the, uh, from the kitchen table. And I'm going, hey, can I get a little room here? I got a couple fart jokes I want to write down. <laughs> well, and that's why, Jimmy, she remains, as always, in our prayers. God bless <laughs> to say. All right. So now I've had I had the other people trash talking about when we when I get all three of you together, we're gonna have the best person in the world contest. I had them trash talking. I think I'm just gonna ask you straight out, do you think you stand any chance in hell of winning this thing? If I win this thing. It should be an investigation because anybody that really knows me well knows I'm an asshole. Listen, Jimmy, you're the reverse lock on this thing. That's how I see it. Okay. I don't know how it's going to go, but if you get any kind of parlay, keep me out of it. All right. So uh, we uh, we asked you to send us a little more video. We just want to get a little more video of you. We, we like using the video on the show. And uh, so uh, here's a little bit more of uh, Jimmy Dunn. I'm very lucky. My wife is very, uh, very sexy, you know? Yeah. Very chatty in the bedroom. Not before. Not during, really. After. She wants to talk about it. And I got to be honest with you, at that point, I'm done. I don't want to talk about it. I really don't even want to be there anymore. I'm like Coach Belichick at a press conference at that point. You see what I'm saying? I, <laughs> she's, she's going, wasn't it great? Was it wonderful? Did you enjoy it? And I'm going, uh, we're happy to get out of here with a win. <laughs> uh, had a good week of practice. Uh, I made some adjustments at the half. We'll take a look at the tape on Monday and see if we can improve. All right, Jimmy, that's amazing. I, I can't thank you enough for, for coming and doing this. My and pleasure, man. I want to bring back Kelly and Corey, Kelly McFarland, Corey Rodriguez, Jimmy Dunn. I want to remind everybody, as we're getting everybody collected here, getting everybody back on, if you want to give to one of the food banks, if you want to give to the Worcester County Food Bank, uh, 961srs.com slash food bank. If you want to give to the Western Mass Food Bank, mix931.com slash food bank. Guys, thanks, everybody. Look, everybody's here. We're all hanging yeah. out. So okay. nice. Fantastic. Uh, I don't know. Were you guys listening to the whole show? Because uh, Corey was definitely talking trash about you, Jimmy Dunn. And <laughs> no, I, he, I heard what he said about me. <laughs> he gave me the ultimate comedian compliment. And yeah. that, is, that is this. He said, I, I don't have a problem with him. <laughs> That's all I asked for. <laughs> I, I, instead of the best person in the world, I almost wanted to play comedian Jeopardy. Now, Jimmy, you may have played this. This was something we used to play a hundred years ago, and I used to play it with our mutual friend Kenny Kenny Rogerson, aka yeah. Viper. And it was a very simple game, comedian Jeopardy. I name a guy, you tell me why he's an asshole. That's the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you love a guy, you've got to be able to come up with a reason why he's an asshole. I mean, everybody's got to be. Right. Right. You know. All right. So are you guys ready to play this game? Best person in the world? Sure. No, I thought uh, we were playing that. I was like, all right, let's I want to play this person. <laughs> that's all. I was like, this sounds risky. I like to be Jeffrey better, right? When I got a little excited, I was like, oh, yeah. but I might win this one too. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, Kelly. I, I can only imagine that there's been plenty of comedians who've been an asshole to you over the years. I mean, I don't know why you would. I'm awful cute. <laughs> all right, go ahead. All right, here we go. First question. All right. Is it okay? To steal pens from, wait a minute, Corey's got his cat. First of all, we're oh. Corey's cat right now. <laughs> this is oh, God bless 2020. This is how we do it. That was so funny. Just, My wife just says, I'm going to take Louie and I'm going to lock him in the bedroom. <laughs> That's a lot. It's a lot like real comedy world, though, because I've had yeah. that happen with a rat in a comedy club. <laughs> yeah, same. I'm not lying, Chris. Ask your wife. Right over the back of me. I don't know. My wife used to own a comedy club that I think everybody on this screen has played at one point or another. Mm. But uh, yeah, yeah, Jimmy, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna use these uh, jokes on the cats, and they're gonna stare at you. Go like, be filled with the lobster. <laughs> I went there again. Back to the lobster well again. Sorry. That cat would like a lobster. I could tell you that. <laughs> Absolutely. That right. cat is such an asshole. Look at it. <laughs> right, let's, like, let's the cat that. wins. Let's yeah, the, the cat's cat. winning. I'll name a cat. You tell me why he's an asshole. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, what does he want? Being all up and everything. Come on, go ahead. What's tell. his name? It's a, it's a girl. That's Libby. Libby the cat. All right. Libby, yeah. I never saw how to use a cat guy. Same. I was just going to say the same thing. Yeah, well, what I, listen, can we move on? What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Forget about the best person in the world. Let's talk about Corey's cat. Like, you know. All right. So, all right. So, first first ethical question, uh, is it okay to steal pens from a bank? Let's start with you, cat man. <laughs> like, steal yeah, them. Yeah, right. It, that's your new name, cat man. Yeah. No, they they make pins for you to take from the bank now if i'm if i'm in with the, the manager or some shit yeah. and then like i'm sitting down we're going over some stuff and i hike that you know i take that pin ah that's a little fucked up you know but i don't feel i'm not bringing it back but like if there's a pin miscellaneous in the bank before covid i would just take that and not worry about it that's a good that's a good that's a good point before covid miscellaneous yeah. pen kelly how do you feel about stealing pens from a bank i mean i would never take anything without asking first mm. You know what I mean? And I also would never touch a pen that's at a bank. Gross. <laughs> Just in general. Yeah, you know, like pandemic, you're not interested in that. Yeah, I wouldn't touch a pen at a bank. Okay. I bring my own pen. Okay. Jimmy, steal a pen from a bank. Oh, oh no, you don't. Not only would I take the pen, I would take the big tube that they shoot the pen out in. <laughs> the, at the drive I, at the drive through. The, it's the perfect size for a subway it. sandwich. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you were going to take the chain that it was yeah, attached to chain, and yeah. the table. Not that old. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm old. I'm not that old. I remember that. They still right. do that. Okay. Let's start. Kelly, we're going to start with you on this. Okay. One. You go to a yard sale or a tag sale, as it's known in some places, and you see an item you've been looking for. It's priced way lower than you know it's worth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Should you tell the person who's having the yard sale that they have underpriced this item? No. Who am I to tell you how to price your item? Mm, all right. All right. Jimmy? Uh, not only would I not tell them, I would say, <laughs> what do you want, 20? I can do 10. <laughs> I like how Jimmy starts every answer with, not only would I do that, <laughs> but I'll do one better. Like I'd take their tube that they yeah. put it in. <laughs> I'll see your asshole, and I'll raise you. Mm -hmm. All right, Corey. What about you? Do you have? Do you, do you think you need to tell the person that they've? I'd only, I'd only tell them if I had already gotten a good deal on a bunch of other stuff. If I hadn't oh, have okay. gotten, if I didn't do that, then I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I would just take it. I gotta say the early, the early, early you know, right now. I got. I gotta say that's called bait and switch. Yeah. The, ooh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's neck and neck with Corey and Kelly with Jimmy way behind. Way him. back. Yeah. We're not even trying. Way back. But I got all kinds of good shit from the yard sale. <laughs> <laughs> Where right. do you think he got that boat? Yeah. <laughs> the Gordy Howe. The yeah. Gordy Howe. I beat That's that guy Gordy up. <laughs> he got that and some napkin rings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, and some eight-track tapes. All right, all right, right. Jimmy, I'm going to start with you on this one. All right. You're at a sporting event. It's not full. This is pre-pandemic, obviously. Not sold out. Is it cool to wander around, (laughs) wander down, take better seats that are empty? 100%, yeah. In in fact, it's it's a sport inside the sport. Yeah. And here's what you do. Okay. You walk up. you, You go like you own the place. And right. there's, an, there's an usher that's protecting the good seats. Right. And you tap him right on the shoulder and say, good to see you, my man. Like you do it every night. <laughs> that's how you do it. You know what's funny? I, I've done it at it's Fenway. I've done it that. at Wrigley Field. I've done it at, <laughs> everywhere. I used to do it at Fenway. I'll tell you how I used to do it at Fenway. I used to go to the, day, the midday matinees at Fenway. And I was working a radio station that was in the Prue. So I get like lousy tickets from a concierge at the Hilton, right? Yep. But I would dress up that day. I'd be like a shirt and tie, literally, to go to the ball game that day. And that way, I looked like some guy that worked in the back bay and had come down and had, like, company tickets. And I would go into the field boxes. It worked every time. But We, have, we, have, a, we have a comedy friend that snuck into the 86 World Series when, wearing a vendor shirt. Oh, my God. And you're not going to tell us who it was? I mean, statute of limitations, Jimmy. You're not going to get a <laughs> <laughs> I think 30 years ago. He owns a comedy club. Our friend John Tobin did that. <laughs> yeah, 1986 yeah. World Series. He went down to he went down to he was a vendor at Fenway. He went down to New York wearing the the same the Aramark shirt, walked right in like he owned the place, <laughs> took the I mean, shirt off and Jeopardy. Now there's John Tobin, a solid guy. We all yeah. know a good guy, but that's an asshole move. Let's face it. <laughs> I think it's a genius move. <laughs> all right, it's gonna be on the news at six. <laughs> what about you, Kelly? Is it okay to take the better seats? Yes. However, you never like falsify a relationship with a security guard because you might need <laughs> him or her on the backside. So you're going to try to get into the seat. You're going to do big eyes, right? And be real nice. And then just be aware of your surroundings because if someone even gives you stink eye, even a little, then you've got to get up immediately and move away. Wow. That's an amazing answer. And I would want to urge everyone to read Kelly's new autobiography, <laughs> Falsify a Relationship. Right? Don't. A phrase I did not think we'd hear. During Do not years. falsify a relationship. Do not. All right. Corey, what about you? You want to, you want to jump in on this? You yeah. Say- Kelly's way doesn't work for me because they call me. <laughs> Bernie back when I made my eyes big for whatever reason. Oh. And, uh, it doesn't usually work for me that way. So uh, yeah, the puppy dog shit doesn't work for a dude, right? Uh, Let's see no, it. Not me. Uh, I I do what Jimmy does, and uh, I always I always uh, I get cool with the person, but I do it a little different. Sometimes I uh, will slip by the person at first, and then. I'll walk back by on purpose and be like, I'll be right back, boss. And then I'll, I'll do it like that. So now you remember, I always establish a relationship with him. So yep. when I come back, I'm good. Establish like, I'm a- or falsify. I'll take, I'll <laughs> take it a step. I'll take it a step further. You bring a hot dog back for the guy. No, I've never done that. I've never I've done, done that. I've done that. Oh, yeah. Well, bribe, I'll, bribe. I'll bribe everybody with food. Right. Sure. But I see Jimmy giving food out all the time. I like Corey's <laughs> technique of I'll be right back, establishing that he already had a seat. Right. Oh yeah. And then we're I'm good. I'm yeah, good yeah. because I did the same. I, I grew up for years doing the same thing at the at the this fucking thing, every time. Same thing. Every time on the movie. Oh, it's ruining me. I love it. Uh so I would funny. do the same thing at the movie. I was I was really like this is this was I mean I still think this works now if you still go to the movies, but uh I would go buy tickets. Uh this was so fucking bad, but I would go buy tickets, and then whatever date I was with, I would go buy tickets, and then I'd be like, all right, I'll be right back. i go back out. i tell the person at the front that I had to leave. I'd be like, oh, I got an emergency. I got to head out. So right when the movie started, i go do that. They're like, oh, no problem. Give you the money back. But while as I was walking out of the movie theater, as I was walking out of the theater, I would walk by the guy who was tearing the tickets and be like, I'll be right back, chief. Go outside, get the money back, come back in. He's like, oh, yeah, I saw you. You're all set. Go back in, have the money back in my pocket. So I was at the movie for free. Well, I was at the movie for the cost of popcorn, probably. You know what I mean? Now, see, now, I did see, that that, that's not falsifying um, a relationship. That's outright theft. 
Yeah, 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 I did know. I that's, did theft, know. that's theft of services. That's a felony. <laughs> yeah, I mean, way worse than a bank pen. Let me just say that. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> listen. But that shit works. Yeah, but he saw more movies than us. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Works. Well, I think obviously the best person in the world after these ethical questions has got to be Kelly McFarland. I mean, look, we knew this was going to happen. We did. And... We, knew. we could all see it coming. And the best cat in the world, Lily, I think we can all agree. I no, mean, Libby, Libby, at least get her name right, Libby. The best cat on this show, anyway. At one point, it looked like you had a tail. <laughs> Corey <laughs> was like waving. I was like, why are you being sexy with this tail? It's his little devil tail as he steals movies at the theater. But guys, uh, Jimmy Dunn, Corey Rodriguez, Kelly McFarlane, I can't thank you guys enough for giving your time and your energy and, and the laughs for the show. Uh, hungry for comedy. We, we really do. We have a lot of food insecure people in Massachusetts and they need our help. And I appreciate you guys helping with it. Okay. Thank no you problem. for thank doing you. it, Cito. You're a good man, Chris Cito. Yeah. I go crazy. All right. <laughs> Thanks, I've been Chris. named a comedian Jeopardy more than once. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. One last plug for the uh, Corey Rodriguez.com, Kelly McFarland.com, Jimmy Dunn.com. Please go and support these comedians and all comedians that you know, any performer that you know. Performers aren't working. The clubs are closed. So uh, just get out there and support. Have some fun. Have some laughs. If you want to give to the food banks, uh, Western Mass Food Bank, mix931.com slash food bank. Worcester County Food Bank, 961SRS.com slash food bank. Guys, thank you once again. Thanks, everybody, for watching Hungry for Comedy. Jimmy Dunn, Kelly McFarlane, Corey Rodriguez. I'm Zito for The Morning Show with Chris Zito and Suzanne Lewis. Thanks for watching.